car order. It's always been car order. I strongly disagree. That's the way it is. Ripped him out through the window in a nice way. Uh, Just so I could go down and uh, drink a carton while everyone punches on. Just pisses me to tears. That's the worst thing you can do. You shut up, you hack. Talking about boat ramps. This is what I wanted to get through from the start. Yeah, what he said. Oh, you just made an idiot. <laughs> And welcome to the Chumming Up podcast, the fishing, spearfishing and ocean adventure podcast that's like having sex with Leewold. Because if you got to do it, it's better to do it in the dark. I am Squirrely and with me, as always, in the dark is Lee Leewold. Mitchell, how you going, big horse? Yeah, good, but I don't know. I haven't had that much to drink. I don't remember having sex with you. <laughs> but, yeah. Well, yeah. well, we're doing the podcast in the dark because the lights are going off. They so have gone off, yeah. That, that, that's as bad as it gets. And we've got an absolute ripper guest this afternoon, uh, Georgia Pointer. Pointer, isn't it? Yep. Yeah, I got it. Yep. I was a bit worried about that bit. <laughs> yeah. And I get called Pointer all the time. Yeah, right? Pointer. Yeah. Right Pointer. No. And uh, she's a skipper at Naruma. What's the charter company that um, you yeah, work for? Yeah, Charter Fish Naruma. Yeah. Yeah, They're all like the Naruma. same. Yeah. All the same. It's just the, the, the names are flipped re- around. Re- yeah. No, they're not all the same. This one's the best because yeah, she yeah. works with them. Yep. So, how are you going, Georgia? Yeah, no, pretty good. Pretty tired. Done a big stint. Weather's been too good of late. Too good. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, I hate amazing. that. Yeah. Yep. yep. So, you fished today? Yeah, fished today. Today was pretty hard going, but yeah, the previous few days been marlin fishing. It's been pretty good. So, yep. Yep. And that's all out of here. Um, we, yeah, mainly out of here we fished, um, cause we had pretty big swell at the start of the week. So we ended up the, f- oh, what's today? I don't even know what today is, but I think Friday. it was Wednesday, Wednesday we fished from here and then we, um, fished our way down to Burmy and then we had a charter actually out of Burmy. So we left the one boat down there and then the next day, um, drove it, the other boat down there and then fished from Burmy. So. That's yep. cool. Thursday. Yeah, so I'm a bit That's different. actually pretty cool. Yeah, yeah. mix it up a yeah. bit. Yeah, it's a bit of a, bit of a stint, but um, no, it's pretty, we do it a little bit, but um, yeah, mainly just always out in the room. So. Yeah. Is yeah. that always just the bill fishing? So when you're chasing marlin, just kind of fo- following the bite, or does that. No, just it was just anything? the. We had a big corporate group, and it was actually between um, four different um, boats. So we had our, both our boats working, and then two of the Burmy boats. Um, yeah, Krusty out of Headhunter and then Trudy V also were part of it. So Yeah, that makes yeah. sense. Yeah, yeah, that's pretty we, cool. That's yeah. good when buddy um all the different operators can collaborate together. Yeah, yeah, no, it's cool. We've done well. it um we did one last year too with the like for the tuna season. That was pretty cool. We did like three yeah, three days straight, so or four days. It was meant I think it was meant to be four days, but on the I only did the three days of it. Yeah, okay. So when you say tuna season, are we talking uh, yellowfin or bluefin? It was both. We ended up, I got, um, the first day was a bit hard going. We got, I got probably like a 40 kilo bluefin. And then I think boss, my boss, he got a yellowfin, but not a real big one, probably like 15, 20 kilo. And then um, the second day was pretty cool. We got him up on the cube really good. But there was a lot of school fish, like um, sort of between that 20, 25 kilos. So they, oh. they were pretty cool. I think I only ended up, I had three people on the boat and we had like, I think we had just under 20 bluefin that we like landed. And then, wow. Well, like, land, like we had them, they were that, like you get them up on the trace and just unhook them really quick and then just go again. Yeah, and, yeah, instead of, um, instead of really doing Yeah, so that was pretty cool. They're always, like, they're pretty epic when you get them on the cube. Um, and then, yeah, the, the next day I ended up, I got a double on yellowfin and yeah. I think so when you, so when you get them on the, cause this, I'm really looking forward to this cause it's something that I've tried a lot of in WA and yeah. struggle. Our yellowfin off Exmouth, I have not been able to get on the cube. I yeah. sort of need a fad or something for, in my experience. Yeah. But, um, do you get the yellowfin and the bluefin together in the cubes or separately? Um, uh, well, I personally haven't seen them together, but, um, my boss, he's probably seen it together. Like he's done a lot more tuna fishing than what I've done. Um, yeah, this season we, we got him up on the cube a few times, but that was just all bluefin. Yeah. And then it, he got yellowfin up on the cube too early in the season. Um, but for us, like the yellowfin, like we always – we used to have a really good fishery for them. And yeah, then, you had the best in Yeah, Australia. for years and years it's like been really quiet. And then um, it's only probably like the last – maybe two or three years that we started getting a really good like um, inshore run of yellowfin and um, it, it started during COVID and it actually ended up working out perfect because they just, I think 
because they had a like closure where we we couldn't even go we were only able to go like a few mile offshore to go fishing and then they lifted it but then there was still the restrictions so like people couldn't come up from down south and like yeah yeah, yeah so right. and then we were out there and we actually went out deep dropping and then next minute see like sarah's yellow fin and black we had the yeah, it was one of the best days of my life. Like, <laughs> it was like I don't think, yeah, more. It was the most epic shit my eyeballs have ever seen. Just like eighty plus kilo yellow and just launching through sourries. Ooh. And then yeah, like it was all stick bait. We we ended up with a bunch of fish and um, yeah, stick bait a really nice fish. Actually, that painting on the fridge that is like based off a bunch of photos I took from that day. And then I just I was like my little memory of it. Um, that's cool. But yeah, so you stick baited a nice one. Yeah, yeah, that we yeah I stick baited. We we actually we got one, uh, we got them a bunch of ways. We got a couple on the troll. We stick baited a bunch, and then we ended up we had live baits too, and we cubed for a while, and then got one down deep too on a live bait. So we got a bunch of ways, and yeah, it was epic because we were like the only boat out there pretty much on yeah, them. Sure. We just had it all to ourselves, and yeah, like pretty much each year since then, um, we've been getting yellowfin. I got. Uh, it wasn't a massive fish it was like probably like a 30 kilo fish but i got that in like 40 meters of water like straight yeah, off like cool. you can see shiros in the background and there's just like you can see all the yellow thing just busting up and it was so cool oh, it was pretty fun i was actually on a half day charter with my boss that day and we're just up like on the reef just we're probably on our way back we're probably just doing a flatty drift or something and i see these birds working the splash and i looked at my boss I'm like wait there's tuna over there and i was just like sort of half taking the piss half not and then, like, I just said, like, because my boss has seen heaps of tuna before, and, like, and, yeah, you just, I looked at him, and then I see his little just ticking, ticking, <laughs> ticking. And, I'm, and then he's, like, get some lures out. I'm, like, oh, all right. <laughs> and then, like, it is That's tuna, cool. isn't it? He's, like, yeah. And then, yeah, and then we, we got back in, and he's, like, I'll clean the fish. You just get the boat ready. And I'm, like, all right. And I'm just running, like, frantic to just throw <laughs> everything in the boat. And then as soon as ever, like, we just launch just straight back out there and just, yeah, end up. I, it was kind of an. I pinned this fish like right on the tip of the nose. Yeah. And I just, I think like the big, well, that first one that I stick, but it was probably like 40 minutes and I had it in. And this one it was like half the size and I pinned it right on the nose. It took me like, it was embarrassing. It was like two and a half hours or something. Yeah, I just, they can like, be a bugger. Aren't yeah, it? yeah. They're brutal fish. Squirrely, um, not a big fan of them. He's had <laughs> yeah, a few, yeah, they do suck. Hey. a few hard ones. Yeah, yeah. wrecked me. Yeah, well, it ended yeah. up being the next day um, I stick baited one, another one, and it was probably like a 50 kilo, 55 kilo fish. And um, I got it up under the boat and it was just doing the big circles. Oh. And then I felt one hook go in it. And then I like, and then it's just doing yeah, it again. Did the run, this is the other one. I'm like, oh, yeah, I'm so happy I just pulled that fish. Because <laughs> <laughs> it it's like, like, obviously, stick baiting's on spins. So yeah, yeah. Oh, and they're long yeah. rods. And yeah, yeah, my little body and back's not really cut out. That shit. Oh, I'm hearing you. We just yeah. went fished for marlin off Burmy in my barrow boat. My back's not cut out for <laughs> anything anymore, yeah. except for maybe auditioning for the next Hunchback of Notre Dame. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'll, I'll be honest. Like, uh, I, I think your missus called up before, and she was like, "Oh, you know, at least Squirrely would have pulled up better." <laughs> and I was like, "Don't fucking count yeah. on that." It's fucking. We're both too old for that shit. Now. Yeah, offshore fishing in that boat's now been retired. Yep. So, yeah, it never got its stripe. It's only got blacks and sails that boat, and it's never getting a stripe. Yeah. It's never <laughs> going again. Yeah. So. Well, you you got some stripe marlin at the fucking uh, <laughs> filleting table. Yeah, it's about time. Like, like fucking. They must have seen you like the way you're walking with your back and thought, oh, here's a pensioner. Yep. Let's give, give him a little bit of striped marlin for his troubles. It's good to have a bit of someone else filleted fish. I've been yeah. about <laughs> 15 as long, years. As long as it was looked after good, like you see so many marlin get killed and then they're just left on the deck. And it's, yeah, yeah, it looked, it looked pretty look, good. And yeah. like um, yeah. you were saying today, Georgia, that uh, just before when we got here, some of the striped marlin are unusually small for this part. Yep. And that one was one of them, like a 55 kilo fish. Yeah, there's definitely been a massive run of those smaller size fish. Probably. Yeah, and there was another. Yeah, that's right. There was another one on the table next to it, another boat had got. Yep. And it was like a 100 kilo fish. And the, the meat color difference was chalk and cheese. One was like white and the other was pink. But the, yep. the 100 kilo still looked good. Yeah. Me and Squirrely have eaten blacks and blues, and the old blues, not the best looking meat. Or what I do don't you think rate of it. the black? Uh, I like it. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. But I just like 
Marlon. So, yeah. but I yeah, ha- I really rate Marlon. I feel like it's a real controversial sort of thing, like any Marlon, but I'm like all for it. Hey, I reckon. Yes. Yeah. Well, yeah. I had um, some striped Marlon yeah. for the first time uh, a few months back. Yeah. And yeah, it was. Unreal. I reckon it's really good sashimi. I love eating it. Raw. Yeah, I actually I like it really raw. Yeah. And that's a big thing. Um, with the blue marlin, the guys that take them, they make the pokey bowl thing. Yeah, people yeah. that are right into that. But um, I'm I'm with you. That, like talking about take, taking marlin, me and Squirly talking about it at the once we left the fill eating table, where there was guys in the tackle shop this morning that wanted to go out and chase kingies and yeah. and snapper. Well, I think snapper, but yeah. they were talking yeah. about bottom fish, and it's yeah. like, you know, them guys that had that one marlin that's whatever old. You know, they've got a freezer full of stuff. Yeah, yeah. And done next to no damage to the waterways yeah. compared to the other side. Not that there's anything wrong with the other guys doing it yeah. either. But, you know, the workload it would take to get 40 kilos of fillet from snapper and stuff compares to one of them striped marlin. Yeah, for sure. Well, I see it obviously heaps on charter because, you know, we do a lot of reef fishing and stuff. And, and then, yeah, you'll put up stuff on Facebook and everyone's all for, oh, you killed a heap of kings or like you got to feed a moeys and – like they're all, especially like things like the moes and the snapper, like those more demersal species, like a lot slower growing and reproducing. And I feel like, yeah, it's so much more socially acceptable to kill them, but you kill a marlin that's such a fast growing and reproducing fish and everyone's up in arms. And I'm like, yeah, but you'd have to kill like 40 moes to get the same feed as like what you'd get out of one marlin. And, and there's no commercial fishery for them out of here. And it's just like, yeah, it's a funny it thing. It just makes sense to me that like, yeah. I've got a cousin who's got a um, wildlife park and rescues animals and he explained it to me years ago like, wonderfully. He's like, it's just all about size and people's perception is that they don't care about the other side. It's, you know, like you step on an ant, no one cares. You know, you you kill a cat, it's a bit like, oh, whatever. Then you kill a horse, it's like, oh, I shouldn't be yeah. doing that, you know. And then yeah. it's like a whale and it's like lock them up for life and throw away yeah. the key, you know. Oh, it's so. a bit like with the hunting side of it too, like, you know, shoot a deer and everyone's like you killed a poor little bambi but then like <laughs> you go out and shoot pigs and stuff and no one no one cares no one about cares. pigs yeah yeah, yeah that's right yeah, yeah. Wait, how am i meant to open a beer with one arm just put the microphone down just put the mic down <laughs> <laughs> open open the beer yeah i tell you what fucking her opening beers nearly as bad that's, as me opening doors. No, you took no, the words right out it. of my mouth. <laughs> not that bad. <laughs> so Squirrelly couldn't open or shut the door at George's house here, the front door, and then he went to the toilet. The door fell off the roller, yeah. and he was locked himself in. But he was too scared, too scared to say anything. Yell out. Me and George are just chatting, and you hear this little rattle, 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 rattle. rattle <laughs> at the door, and she's like. Can you get out of there? <laughs> Just 20 minutes stuck in a toilet. I'm not having a good run of uh, toilets on this trip. Oh, that's right. Yeah. Yeah, that's his good. Between Servo Man and that. Yeah. Fucking, I don't know. Um, yeah, so obviously you're a skipper now. Yep. How did the journey start? Like, um, how young is a deckhand? Fucking, have, I guess- you, have you just always been into fishing? Yeah, yeah, like pretty much from get go. As soon as I was born, my dad had him like a little backpack, just take me everywhere fishing with him. And yeah, yeah, I've got like heaps of photos of me just as like yeah, probably like one, two years old. And yeah, dad, he used to do heaps of beach fishing, so he'd walk up the beach and flick lures. And then it was always heap. Well, as I got a bit older, like probably I don't know four or something, it was always good for him because I'd be running a long charge, and then it would wear me out, and then I'd pull fish in and probably. Made me less of a pain in the ass when I got home or something. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, no, I just frothed it from get-go. I've always, I think I've just always loved catching things because, yeah, when I was little, I used to spend all day just in the garden trying to catch lizards and things like that, all the blue tongues and little dragons. Just love catching things. And then, yeah, obviously, as I got older, just, just love fishing. Yeah. And then, um, yeah, I got into, like, I used to love going snorkeling, but I would always get really cold. And it wasn't until I was probably about 12 or something where I got a better like a better wetsuit and stuff and then could handle the cold and that and then I just froth spear fishing and yep doing all that stuff and yeah I was just a little ramp rat hey like I used to go fishing all the time and then as soon as I come back in I'd just go and grab all the frames from like everyone's leftover frames and stuff and then I'd be burning up trying to catch brim off the ramp and that sort of thing or 
trying to pull the eels out of the rock wall and just doing <laughs> shit, just being a menace. Yep. And um, at the time, yeah, my boss's boats, they were moored over at the main wharf and he yeah, obviously just seen me running around being a little spastic child. And he's like, I got to, yeah, I would have been just sort of towards the end of high school. And he's like, oh, when are you going to come and work for me? And I always, um, he always like, yeah, he was unreal at the fishing stuff and had a really good reputation. And yeah, I thought it was pretty cool that I got given up. Like, he's like, oh, when are you going to come work for me? And I was like, that'd be sick and so yeah I just finished school and so I started I would have been at, well I was yes 18 and so I started decking for him and as soon as I started decking for him he's like oh, when are you going to get your tickets and drive for me and I was like oh all right like Make no worries and then so on. yeah oh I was just thinking I would put mine on so <laughs> 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 I don't want to embarrass myself um yeah so no, I start. I was decking for him and then he's yeah, when are you going to get the tickets? So I started doing my coxswains. I just did that through the local TAFE and it was just a year course. And then, um, yeah, obviously I was just taking you throughout that. And then, um, yeah, I think I got my coxswains when I was 19. And pretty much, it was not long after I did my coxswains too. I ended up starting my five. So I've got my coxswains and my master five. Um, and then I think I've been, I've been working, this will be my sixth year now of um, doing the charter stuff. And I think probably like, two or three years of driving the boats now for him so yeah no i i still really like it it's it's pretty cool because i guess where we live um we've got like montague island so we do all like the snorkeling and stuff with the seals and take people um out to go on to the island and then yeah we do the reef fishing but like it's just cool because it varies throughout the year like yep. obviously this time of year we got the mar like the striped marlin and do all the dolphin fish and that sort of thing and the kingfisher going right at the moment and then come winter do all the tuna and the deep dropping and do the ling and blue eye and that sort of thing so um it's cool because it just like mixes it up a lot it's not like the same shit every day um I reckon that's really cool. Yeah, yeah. We talked about that a bit today. Like when we when we just me and Squirrels went and had um, dinner at the Burmy pub. Yeah. And they got all the fish on the walls, and I was sort of explaining that to him. I'm like, yeah, you know, like back home we have an all year marlin run, but it changes. You have blue marlin. Yeah. Black marlin, and then like a sailfish season, and then little different seasons yep. things. But it seems similar here where you have that, you know. But instead of an all year marlin, you have your marlin run, but then. Yep. You have a tuna run, which is fucking cool as yeah. shit. Yeah, like yeah, it. no, it's good fun. Yeah, and it varies. So, like every year is just so different too. Like um, we've had a pretty poor kingfish season. Do you, you guys get kingfish over in WA? Don't you? Yeah, yeah, yeah. The last like Monty Island, I guess it, like it's almost pretty famous for like the kingfish there. Um, but the last few years it's been pretty poor, and this year we've like it's been not it's been pretty good really, especially compared to the last few years. Um. That's cool. But yeah, like we got to do the kingfish thing, and then um, I can't even remember what was going with this. So we <laughs> started on a rampage about kingfish. But yeah, we've been doing all that stuff, and then um, yeah, I'm really that lost that. Yeah, that's all right. This kingfish. Thing. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I think. There. Thank you. We're just uh, talking about the different uh, like parts of the season. Yeah, age, yeah. Age uh, oh, fish, I, I know. So. What I was going. Yeah, just um. So yeah, every year is that different, and um. I think it was would have been last year's the year before like we had this like really random late run of like jelly bean bluefin like they wouldn't have been like 10 kilos and they started probably I don't know, it would have been like during tuna season but then it like lasted right through to christmas and we were going out to the island and like stick like catching bluefin on charter out of montague like it was That's so cool. cool like i was taking Oh, I, should, I was doing dodgy shit because it was during COVID and then I was like, we were locked, meant to be locked down and I was taking my like not even five metre rubber ducky out to the sea mounts to go stick bait blue. <laughs> That's <laughs> cool. Um, but then it was cool because then like a few weeks later they came, moved back into the island so it was all legit. Then, <laughs> then yeah, it worked nice. out perfect. You could go out because like um, I love in like sashimi and raw fish so yeah. you'd go out and they're like the perfect size and so you'd go out yeah. and get, catch, but you're only allowed to keep one and then you smash that, and then a few days later, you go out and get another one, and then yeah, we get a we get a run of yellowfin like that yeah. in X mouth that are mm. like that size. You can go out and catch heaps of them. Yeah. It can be quite tedious when you're marlin fishing in comp. Sometimes you'll catch like forty in a day, and oh, you're just like, yeah. oh. I guess that would almost be like how the oh the dolphin fish for us like oh, I know yuck. The, yeah, the last <laughs> one. yuck yeah golden <laughs> sea carp. <laughs> there was something really interesting this year though. I don't. Um, I don't know if you've ever had this problem, but a bunch of, like, including myself, but a bunch of mates, we've all been getting sick of eating dolphin fish. Nah, I have heard of that. Yeah. 
and the mushy ones and that, but I've never experienced yeah. it off Exmouth. They're always pretty consistent, yeah. though, eh, squirrels? Yeah. I, I actually just seen someone uh, write about that on Facebook. Got though, sick of it. The, yeah, they, got they, they of had it, it yeah. um, as uh, sashimi, yeah. them and their partner, and, yeah, got really sick. Yeah. It's odd because other than cigatari, you don't usually hear of anyone getting sick off fish. No. Nah. Yeah. Right. Time. No, well, I, I haven't ever had SIG before, and um, like some of the, my mates who have been getting cooked, they have previously had yes. SIG. But yeah, like I've never, I've never been cooked off it before. But it's just, I don't know, it's weird. This year, there's, yeah, I got it, my boss got it, and then I know of two or three other mates who've oh, wow. been cooked off it. And like when I got, like when me and my boss got cooked off it, that was off cooked fish as well. Like it wasn't. Yeah. Cooked yeah. Cheaper, right. So there um, you go. I don't know if got interesting like thought. Or something cool. Yeah. So another thing, obviously, you're um, you've represented Australia in spearfishing and that as well, which is cool. Yeah, I have. Yeah, I'm, and you're sponsored I'm, diver as well. I'm right. Yep. Sponsored. So obviously, yep. like you said, no problems with the good wetsuit now. Squirrel used to have the same problem. He used to get really <laughs> cold. He did. Like yeah, he'd I come diving fucking... with me, and his lips would go all blue, and he'd be yeah. Yeah, I'd, I'd shake until I'd start cramping up. Yeah. So that'd be when I'd just have to fucking stick a fork in it. But yeah, yeah the wet wetsuits. Made yeah, a like, yeah, yeah, they're unreal but. now. Like it was always hard, like I guess especially as a um yeah, as a chick and then as a pretty small chick as well, like um it's pretty hard to get wetsuits to to fit your Yeah, you made like a kid's yeah. wetsuit. Yeah. But sorry <laughs> <laughs> didn't mean it as an insult. But it's obviously right, I get called a midget all the time. I <laughs> I even had to look it up. I'm actually above average fight by one centimeter. Yep. Yeah, um, me too. Yeah, yeah you know why? Because there's a lot of Asian people in the world. But, um... <laughs> fuck off. <laughs> but in saying that, obviously what you're sort of getting at is back in the day, there wasn't a lot of really good quality wetsuits for smaller people. Yeah, 100%. Where these days yeah, there, there is. is. Yeah. Yep. They catered to it a lot more. And, yeah, obviously fe- there's a lot more female divers out there. Oh, too, so. heaps and good female yeah, divers. Like I imagine you are like diving with your friend, Alex Edwards. Yeah. Blew my fucking mind because it's never been humbled so hard. You know, it's <laughs> like, oh yeah, come and do this. You're like, fuck No, nah, she's an absolute weapon. And yeah, she, I'm so proud of her, especially like obviously she just did worlds and she came second and yeah, absolute phenomenal effort. Like, Yeah, that's cool. Second and was leading after day one. Yeah. 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 I, I think there was a lot of people cheering her on to win it. <laughs> Yeah, no, I was so proud of that. I think they got into Pacifics now or something, don't they? Or yeah, something? I don't actually know if she's competing or if her sister's competing. She year. was scouting or something. Yeah, I know she was on the like. Cause, yeah, I think her sister's doing it, but um. Yeah. Okay. I think she's almost yeah taking a bit of a step back. But I think she was keen to do worlds again, but. Yeah. Um, yeah. So how did you get into representing Australia in that? That's right. I think. Well, I got, ended up getting selected. Um. I used to do a fair bit of comp diving. I don't actually do much comp diving anymore. Um, I just, I don't know, I sort of prefer just to go recreationally. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I went down, I did the Eden Nationals and I did really well at that. I ended up, well, I ended up coming second and it was pretty cool. It was like, it was a pretty hard comp because um, the Eden coastline, you can't shore dive at all. It's all out of boats and then um, you've got to be a pretty good swimmer. And yeah, luckily I'm like, pretty fit. So like the first day... Um, of the comp diving, like what, yeah, all the boats go out and you're all in this one area, and yeah, we're all parked up in Disaster Bay, and I ended up swimming all the way from Disaster Bay out to um to Grand Cape, like out to the very point of it, which I think there and back ends up being like almost a ten, like, it was like either eight or ten k swim or something. Jesus Christ! And um and it was pretty cool though, like because I was pretty young, I was only like eighteen or nineteen, and like yeah, like um it, like everyone obviously did a really good job, but a lot of the people all sort of paired up whereas I was just like on my own the whole time and um so yeah I was I was pretty proud of myself because yeah did not too bad just on my own there just yep. yeah did a lot of swimming and then yeah any chipped away and any then, interactions with sharks on on that I think I see oh so long ago. I seen a few grey nurse sharks but other than that um nothing else there was a house so I had seals seals are probably like one of the main things that yeah, her ass, pest. Yeah. Um, yep. And I just remember, like, I think it was on the last day of competing. And I, I, know I didn't have a boat float or anything like that. Like, I was so, new, like, pretty new, really, to comp diving. So, like, every, a lot of people were running boat floats, and I was just there with, like, 
this little float with all my fish hanging off it. Yeah, and, oh, um, imagine doing yeah. that back home. <laughs> oh, you'd probably get eaten. No oh, you'd um, be gone. But yeah, like I just remember having the seal come in and I just like threw all my fish on my back and I just feel fish spines going into my back. I'm like, I'm not getting my fucking fish. Yeah. <laughs> like, yeah. And uh, I know so many people got fish taken off them from seals that day and I was like, no, nah, I just threw them on yeah, my back right. and I just wouldn't let them out so, of them. To make the nationals, you had to fight a seal. Is pretty yeah. much what, you, yeah, yeah, maybe. <laughs> <seal. laughs> <Yeah, nah. laughs> no, um, this one's for Bin Laden. So then, once you made it, yeah. did you go overseas? Well, it ended up being the year that I did it was actually held in Australia. So I did it when yep. I was in Australia. Um, That's I have cool. been asked a few times to do it, but it's, uh, it's a big job, eh? It is, yeah, and just like the, it. It would be good, but, like, it, even the New Zealand one this year, like, so I sort of got asked if I wanted to do it, and I'd sort of rather just go over recreationally and sort of go dive with Alex and then tee up a hunt and go do that sort of thing. Like, yeah, that's right. Go um, shoot some tar or a big snag yeah, yeah, or something. Yeah, that's what I, it's on. Yeah, I'd really like to do this year's, like, tar and chamois. That's high on the list, so hopefully try and line that up later this year, so. Yep, and you want to shoot us? Big snapper over there too, or yeah, not? Yeah, yeah. Yep. So twenty pounder, I gather, or ten kegger. Yeah, I, I mean, the snapper would be cool, but obviously we get snapper here as well. So I feel like it's probably not. I'd rather almost. But they're go so sh- big over there. Yeah, I feel like I'd almost rather go shoot like a John Dory or one yeah, of the giant boarfish cool. or yep. like stuff like that. Just something that we don't like. Yeah, stuff that we don't get here. Um, yeah, I know. Yep, I know. So, you mean. I, obviously, I wouldn't knock it back. I would one hundred percent pump one if I seen it. But like, yeah, yeah, yeah. But it's just the the fact they're so big. Mm. Like you're not going to shoot a ten kilo snapper here, are you? Probably not. But yeah, south no. like South Australia, but their snappers banned. Yeah. So yeah. southern WA is probably one of your best bets to get it. Ooh, we have light again. On. Southern WA is probably one of your best bets yep. to get a ten kegger. Yeah. Where New Zealand, you can get them, and they're like yeah. half as long as an Australian one because they're so fat over there. Yeah, true. We get some all right snapper here. I've seen um, some all right snapper here, but just haven't managed to like, seal the deal on. I've only ever shot a smallish snapper here. Um, yeah. Shooting them's the hard bit, though, too, yeah. because the depth and whatnot, you know, where yeah. a lot of big snapper in Australia are fairly deep. Yeah. The ones, like, you get them up pretty shallow um, at the island. It's been, for, like, I've seen a bunch of times, though, like, I'll be on charter and sometimes I'll... Um, depending who else is on the boat, like I'm able to jump in for a dive. Yeah. And I, yeah, I swear every time you don't have a gun, it's just like, <laughs> yeah. it's like, what the fuck? Like, yeah. And this, I had one charter actually where um, I had to go recover an anchor and I jumped in and it, I swear there must have almost been like some sort of spawning aggregation. It's like, I seen so many snapper and yep. like some of the fish were like sort of up around that, they're probably up around that 70, 80 centimetres. Like yeah, 80 centimetres. And I'm like, and I was going big down and sitting on the bottom, and they're like sitting right in front of my face. I'm like, are you fucking real? Like, it was like the full definition of a cock tease. I was just like, this is bullshit. Like, and then I, I went back in, I'm like, I'm going, I told my boss, I'm like, I'm taking the boat back here. And I raced home, grabbed my gun, went straight out. And um, I ended up, I'd done a massive day and I had a huge headache. And I was sitting on the bottom, and I'm like, after like, it was like minute 30, and then I was like, fuck, I was just <laughs> fuck rattled. This. And I'm like, I'm going to go back up. And and then as I like lifted up off the bottom, prop, it wasn't a massive. It was probably like a sixty-five, seven, seven meter fish. It, like come in, yeah. and I'm like, fuck. and I like tried to swing the gun around, so he shot. Yeah. And I was like, I, I think I shot like a forty-five or something. And yep. yeah, and they can be they can be tricky to hunt. Yeah, I know Tim McDonald. He'd shoot snapper to day after day after day. He yeah, loves them. Yeah, it's ridiculous that, he's just, that dude shoots. Oh yeah, but he just loves snapper. He yeah. loves them. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Where the New Zealand ones, everything's so different over there. Yeah. You hunt them in like really shallow water in kelp beds on ledges. Oh, yeah. They do come up pretty shallow here. Like I'd say like sort of eight, ten metres. Yeah, yeah. It's probably like... Shallow. Yeah, we get, them, get them. We get them like that in the West, but they get massive ones there. Yeah. Like huge ones. Yeah. Ba- you can get their... They bury them off the rocks and their backs come out of the water. And oh, they're yeah, like 30 pounders. Do like bo- yeah, yeah, we're just just slingshotting them. Yeah, that's, yeah, that's cool. You seen that, Squirrels? Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, but yeah, buddy, um, and they burly funny over there. They set a burly. Yeah, bit. yeah. So they like shoot a mawong or whatever or a buffy and then they chop little bits in it like all, and chop it all up so it's bleeding and bits of flesh are poking out. Then you swim down into like a likely looking spot and put a rock on top of the whole fish. 
Yeah, right. And but and it's sort of like if it's on a ledge with yeah. a big gutter or whatever, and then you can come back later yeah. and like dive before it comes through the kelp so they don't see you and they're all on there picking it. Yeah. And then you shoot them. So you might set two or three of them. Yeah. We used to do that for blue bone in the Gulf. Yeah, okay. Oh. Like we'd, uh, you know those little like dive bags that the shitty little fins and that yeah. used to come in? Just used to fill them with either crabs or sea urchins and smash them, tie them to the ledge. And like you said, because you knew where it was, yeah. you'd come back and fucking yeah. like come back hiding behind the ledge and catch one of those sneaky little fucking golf blue bone. Yeah, yeah. having a nibble. It works really well to drop in a burly bag on the bottom, especially yeah. for snapper because they look up and they see you coming and they go. But when they're down eating, like yeah. if you barely from the top, they're coming up eating yeah, and yeah. they can see you. When they're down eating, you just yeah, come straight true. down on them and they're yeah. just dumb as dog shit. It's awesome. Yeah. Perfect. The only thing is, like, I don't know how you go about it here only because, like, especially at the island with, like, like heaps of grey nurse sharks, heaps yeah. of the big smooth rays and the, heaps of wobby gongs and, like... Yeah, the rays and that in New Zealand too. As soon as you put any burly in the water, you've got... Oh, and the Port Jackson sharks as well. Yeah. You've got, and they just smash it and... Well, New Zealand's gone the same, and they've got bull sharks and that now, like everywhere too. Yeah, right. Yeah, yeah they got they when I was there anyway years ago. Yeah, I don't think anywhere's got more sharks. Where it was actually that? pretty the funny because um, I remember when Alex went to WA for the first time, and prior to her going there, like because obviously like on China we catch sharks, and like I I don't mind killing sharks. Like, <laughs> like oh, I think it's heaps. hello. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and um, and I was she's like. You can't kill sharks, Georgia. Like, and she was like, full shark love. And I think it was her first day diving in WA. And she, she came back, she's like, I want to shoot a bronze whale. I want to shoot a tiger. I want to shoot a baker. And yeah, she had, I think she, she did a short dive where she shot a snapper and I think it was a whiting and it, it was a jewfish. And then she just got fucking smashed by this big whale. And yeah. she was just like, Georgia, this thing wanted to eat me. I was like, yeah. Oh, <laughs> that's what sharks are like. Yeah. yeah. They're a bugger, eh? It was just so funny, just the switch. Wasn't yeah. She loved, at first, she loved diving with all the sharks and then yeah. she was off it. I remember <laughs> her fin, fin riding a tiger shark. She was into that. That was yeah. cool. So. Yeah, I, I think you got a photo of her fin riding a tiger shark yeah. and you'd, you'd done it for 10 minutes before yeah. and she didn't take any photos. Yeah. I, was, now, I was riding it. I'm like, you should ride this thing. <laughs> yeah. And she just only got on for like 10 seconds and it threw her off, but I got like the perfect photo. It looked yeah. like she was like, gro- just like cruising with it. <laughs> That's right. Yeah. Where did I get... I haven't seen too many tigers here. I've seen a few. Um, I seen one last year when I was diving the traps and stuff, and it was pretty cool. I was actually diving with that young, like Tommy, that young fellow I was telling you about earlier. Yeah. Um, went like just looking for dollies, and I was swimming back to the boat, and I was like, "Fucking big tiger!" And I was like, "That's sick!" And I was like swimming up, and it just creeped yeah. up into the depth. But your big sharks still get fished here. So you got like that yeah. trap man and that. Yeah. They legally fish for sharks. Yeah. Where WA. Anywhere below Shark Bay, so anywhere near what this latitude would be, they all them sharks are protected. Yeah. So okay. it's just yeah. nuts. <laughs> like they're yeah. any whaler over whatever, you can't take it all. And now they've just banned shark fishing off the beach. Oh really? Yeah, it's the biggest do good of crap. Oh, just going on that. <laughs> what are your thoughts on the blue groper ban Ooh. in New South Wales? <laughs> since you're oh. As good as an expert as we've got. Jeez, I oh, don't know. I'm bit of fine line but like i'm not really that stressed like i've done like blue groper fishing like winter time get a lot of westerlies and stuff so it's always like a bit of a fun thing to go and do like go just yeah you can go and fish with gropers and stuff like i'll take my kayak out and try and fish for them out of the kayak so it's pretty good fun um i reckon they taste unreal yeah, but like they yeah they, they taste good um but like i don't know but no they're like one of the most prolific fish that you see when you go diving and I don't, not many people take them, and I just think it's like it's pretty hectic that they've realistically they've barred the band blue groper fishing purely off this one this big uproar because the guy shot one out of Sydney. Yeah, and I'm like, like the amount of poaching and wrong yeah. stuff that goes on a daily basis. I'm like, are you gonna start barring like you know, a bunch of fellas poached undersized kings the other day? I'm like, are you gonna ban kingy fishing now or like yeah. um, massive ab- illegal abalone? And the whole thing, like, yeah, they're doing it as a twelve-month trial and gather research. You're never getting it back. What are they gonna? What are they basing it off? Because they haven't got any pre-existing stuff. So, 
don't know. It's well, it is always a weird one, the blue groper, because you're you're allowed to spear them in WA. Yeah, yeah. But even still, there's towns where like people I know, yell at you if you do. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. same as the Sydney thing. Like yeah. there was one. Um, I, I did a gig. At, at a small town, and a bloke in there had uh, punched out a guy at the pub because <laughs> he talked about spearing a blue, blue groper. groper yeah. And so that I don't know. There's some weird emotional connection. To, yeah. Yep. I don't know. But yeah. I only got punched out when I drank rum. <laughs> yeah, but you deserved every single one, <laughs> and the government. <laughs> Didn't try and step in. But but. I'm with Georgia on it, um, what she's saying, because I'm a big advocate of it now in my mind. That's how I advocate. Um, It's just the death by a million pinpricks of everything. It's like, yes, it's just blue grow, but it's not that big a deal. But like you said, three years from now, yes, it's just kingies, not a big deal. Yeah. Yes, it's just half, this is one marine park or one sanctuary zone, okay. Yes, it's one more. Yes, now it's not marlin. Now it's not sharks. And it's the shark fishing off the beach in WA you can't do anymore in some parts. They came for our blue groper and we stayed silent. Did we? Next, they came for That's our red right. emperor. Oh, yeah, yep. I got you. Yep, yep. Yeah, no, I just, oh, I said it's a bit of a stepping stone. Like, it's, yeah, if you're going to start here, like, where's it going to end? And, yeah. Um, and, like, it. Are you saying storm the capital? Because I'm here and storm <laughs> the capital. <laughs> Um, the whole, the like, joint. not being able to spear blue groper too. Like, my whole understanding of it was, like, back in the day when they first realised that there was an issue with the blue groper numbers because obviously they're, you know, they're not the brightest fish. Like, they're a pretty easy target for spearers. Um, and so they sort of, I don't know if they banned it or I can't remember exactly what happened, but when they went to reintroduce it, they actually gave spearers the option of being able to have, like, the same as the fish shows, like a one fish. And... Spearers decided that no, like we don't like it's not a necessity. Like we don't have to, and it was almost like a representation of the fact that spearfishing is a selective sport and that we don't have to do it. Like for new, like yeah. for yeah. here anyway. Yeah. Um, and there's a bit of the same like with the grey nurse shark thing. So like it wasn't ever like a. I don't feel like it was ever barred because I don't know. Like obviously yeah, they're allowed fishing, but yeah, it was almost like the Spiros just taking one for the team, sort of thing. Like, well, we don't have to do this. So then, yeah, they fucked up. There. I would yeah. never <laughs> give them. I'd just take, take, take. Yeah, give yeah. them nothing. You can, yes. Yeah. 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 <laughs> do you oh, want? Remember, yes. Yeah. One of the last times I oh, I haven't dived up Coffs Way for ages, but I just remember the last time I dived up Coffs and like everything else was so finicky and just the blue grove just had this attitude about like we're fucking untouchable and like they just come and like <laughs> waltz in your face and you're like, Are you for fuck just go yeah. away? Just let from them have me. it. Yeah. yeah. They're fucking private yeah. school flogs, the <laughs> old They are. Yeah. But no, Daddy's like, money. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Don't worry, um, uh, I know someone in the government, yeah. okay. You ever heard no. of uh, the Prime Minister? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I feel like, yeah, it's definitely like everyone carrying on because they've got this like emotional connection to them. But like, there's so many other fish though that you see whilst diving. Like all those spe- like wrasse species you see, they're all like the same. They're very curious fish and you, you know, you, same story you're going, you can hand feed them and this, that, the other. And I'm like, there's no difference between them no. and, and the other ones. Like, Nah, that's it. Oh, interesting. Anyway. Well, we solved yeah. the problem. That's the main thing. Yeah. We're, we're storming the capital. <laughs> um, we solved the problem of not having to ban marlin fishing because yeah. we didn't yep. catch one anyway. <laughs> yeah, yep. that's it. Well, yeah, no. yeah. We, we came to an agreement that, you know, how yeah. many marlin will you take? None because yeah. we can't yeah. find the cunts. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Yeah. Yeah. No, well, um, so with, with your spear fishing, you're obviously pretty good if you've in the national team. <laughs> yeah. That's not a good good sign. Yeah, yeah. Um yeah, so what 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 are the best fish that you've speared? What are the ones that sort of Or do you like to spear? Do I like hate Did you know the other day I had someone ask me if I was vegan? I was like, Yeah mate, I'm fucking vegan. <laughs> Charter captain. Yeah, yeah. 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 I think um, oh, literally well, like, everything on your wall yeah. is a dead animal. <laughs> like, We're well, staring I, at dead animals yeah. everywhere. Yeah. No, I, I do. I really, I do actually really like veggies. So I went out for dinner somewhere. And I, I think I ordered something and it was just like pretty much all veggies. And like, are you vegan or something? And I'm like, yeah. And yeah. then he's like looking at me. He's like, hold up a minute. You fucking hunt. And I'm like, <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, no. 
not vegan, Jesus Christ. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> no, well, it's kind of, I haven't done, as oh, the last few years, obviously, um, because I'm doing more like the child work and I'm always working good weather day. So um, definitely haven't had as much opportunity um, to as much spoon as I like. Um, but yeah, over the years I've shot a few good, like shot a, when I was down in Port Ferry for the Nationals down there, got to shoot a bluefin. So that was pretty cool. Um, it was a massive fish, bro. I think it was, it was 22 kilos. So that's cool. But it was, yeah, it was a pretty epic experience. Like, cause obviously like here I'm pretty used to like what bluefin are like. And I know like how hard tuna can be to catch. And um, I remember, like, Alex was there for that, and they were meant to be, like, we were meant to be there scouting for this comp, and she comes back, I'm like, I just shot a bluefin. I'm like, what do you mean you just shot a fucking bluefin? You're meant to be scouting in four metres of water for, like, banded bowies and shit. Like, where have you... And then, yeah, anyway, like, we were there with, um like, Taylor Martindale and Joe Martindale and had their boats, and we shot out that arvo at, like, 2 o'clock or something, 2, 3 o'clock in the arvo. I'm like, as if we're just going to rock up and there's just going to be bluefin frolicking. Rocked up, there's just bluefin <laughs> I was like... And we're literally like, we're in 20 meters of water. You can see let, like we're probably like a K or two Ks offshore. The water, mind you, like was absolute filth. And yeah, like see him rippling on the top, jumped in and you see the, like, the flickers of like the keel on them, the yellow flickers. And yeah, did a drop and like just vortex by like all nice. these like little schooly bluefin. And um, we're all like, because we went down there to shoot like, yeah, like I said, like we're only, but like, we've got the, we're out of Port Ferry and they've got these like areas called the ponds and like probably like a max of four meters so we've all got like little guns and stuff i think i ended up throwing i had a 110 so i just brought that with me for shits and gills anyway and um yeah like had one come through and yeah sure i ended up stoning it so that was that was pretty cool and it just did this yeah, <laughs> <that's cool. laughs> it was heaps good and then um and after that like a bunch of the other guys shot a few fish but i was like I can't eat this much fish. I ended up just jumping in with the GoPro and filmed them. And yeah, that was unreal. I remember, actually, I think Alex made a video and there's this bit where I come up. I'm like, the guy's like, where's the fuck's George? And I was just on my own in the middle of nowhere, just like filming these two. And I'm like, just leave me. I'll die happy. <laughs> <laughs> and I was just like, oh, I was just having the time of my life. Um, so yeah, that was pretty cool. And I've shot a bunch of like pretty decent sized kings up. Um, like shot a 22 kilo fish and then shot a few like 18 and 19 kilo fish out of home. So, um, oh, I really enjoy shooting them and I really want to shoot a, a mile and that's definitely one of the goals. Hopefully try and tick that off this year. Um, being just pretty, sl- oh, I'm not slack, but just being t- really busy with work, just trying to get the time off to go shoot one of them. So yep. yeah, I'd like to do that. Does it matter if it's, um, teased up or bait ball? Does it have to be, are you particular on it? Oh, not really, but I feel like I'd probably rather get one off a ball. Mm-hmm. I'd really, I'd love to film a bait ball, to be honest. I'd love to jump in on a ball and just film it, fish working on it. But yeah. um, no, I think, I don't know, we've got a pretty good fishery here and there's definitely a like, fair bit of opportunity like with bait balls and stuff. So I think um, I'm with you. I think if you've got the opportunity, it's yeah. a far cooler yeah. way to get it. I have actually, I don't know, if I, really want to tell story, I have actually shot one, but it was, uh, we had a bait ball up and we ended up, we pitched hooked a fish on it and then i jumped in and, shot and the boss went, fish? no no i um i didn't actually the, the, my boss went on there chasing this fish that they've hooked and i'm just on my own or just and then yeah fish came through and i did yep yeah, shot it but the slip tip didn't come off and it didn't engage so this fish just went in and it was like really nice shot and you just kept straight back out and i was like what the fuck yeah <laughs> it was pretty gay i was uh, <laughs> yeah well i um <laughs> i've torn off a striped i shot it low mm-hmm through the gut area yeah. and i oh, not super low but in its guts yeah and tore it off after about 10 minutes yeah so that's the uh i still need to tick the stripe to have yeah. them all yeah that's not but, a good feeling i was pretty i was pretty sad yeah um i see you can shoot blacks off bait balls too do you yeah. catch them off the like do you catch them off bait balling often or is it more just a stripe thing probably more just a stripe thing but um like really it's up I don't know. I haven't probably done enough mile fishing to make a good call on that, to be honest. Because um, I know Nikki Watts, um, Australian record black yep. mile and come off a bait ball. Yeah, okay. footage. Yep. So she's hopped in and then it's like yep. swimming on the bait ball like Which, a striped would. We get a, like a, a fair few blacks coming close to shore too. When I was um, I was pretty young, I was only like probably 16 or 17 and I was out at the island and dad was burning for me and i was just i was doing a few like drops looking for kings and i come up and a, a black came through and i was just like fuck yeah this is 
was so sick, but I, I had like this tiny little flow and I was so underpowered and I just, I was like, no, nah, like I didn't even bother taking the shot and I just filmed no, it that's and not squealed. Dad, <laughs> Dad thought I was getting eaten by a shark. I was just like that pumped and he's like, what just happened? I'm like, the marlin just came through and I've, been, I've hooked a bunch of like on charter too, like out at the island, kingfish and stuff yep. and hooked yep. a few. Um, how squirrel he's got his world hand lining yeah, records. Yeah, all the hand lining yeah. ones. Similar things. <laughs> we catch a fair few, don't we? Bottom yeah. fishing back home, you get marlin so yeah. it's fairly often. Yeah. No, I haven't seen too many this year, but we definitely, yeah, at certain times we had a pretty good run of like blacks and close. So. Yeah, I see that. I see like yeah. some of the reports when people catch seven fish or whatever, and be three blacks and four stripes or whatever. Yeah. I feel like um, it's a probably something that doesn't really get done very often, like especially out of home, like. Yeah, like, not so. I haven't seen many this year, but last year, like, I was, you see marlin like every day, pretty much every time you're out there fishing, you'd see a black. And yes, something that, yeah, everyone's always heading out to the shelf to go fish for marlin. And, Where the blacks are inshore? Yeah, it's probably a fishery that doesn't really get hit very often, so probably the one now that I said on. <laughs> <laughs> You've got me yeah. excited. Yeah. yeah. That yeah. sort of stuff I think is really cool. Yeah. I'd like to sink my teeth into some blue marlin fishing after seeing that 900 and something pounder up on the wall at the Bermagui pub as well. Yeah. Yep. I don't know if the blue marlin fishing gets as fished as hard as it could here. Yeah, definitely. I don't, yeah, don't think it does. Oh, I'm just chewing at the bit to get a boat over here that isn't <laughs> something that destroys your back. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh. An old man's bite. Yeah. That's what you need. Yeah, big. Big boat with a lazy boy fucking skipper's sake. Yeah, bean bags. Bean bags. Wait, bean bags or the shit? Bean oh, yeah, bags yeah. and dry. That's that's prerequisites. Yep. Yeah. I fucking, uh, I, I fell into the boat today. I fell asleep watching the... Yeah, little, <laughs> <laughs> did micro sleep. Did micro sleep. Ah! Little head nod. He's just... Yeah. <laughs> yeah. My fa- normally, Squirrely sees a fish in the spread yep. before me. Two times out of three, he will. And I'm like, I'll just look forward because we'll try and see if we can find him bait balling. I'll yeah. look for birds. And you just watch the spread. And after watching him micro sleep, I was that confident. I even checked the leaders for Dave <laughs> to see if we had one gagging on it back there. But no one was watching. Yeah. Uh, yeah. That was like yes- yesterday. Um, it was fairly ordinary conditions out there. And I was driving off the roof. Just like, yeah, it's just rodeo. rodeo up yeah. There. And um and the seals were that bad. Even at the like when we were trying to get baits at the bait hole, that I got like sealed like three times. Like, this is fucking bullshit. And then um yeah, put out skippies and they lasted about ten minutes. The next minute got sealed and then but yeah, I'd be like I'd be there, I'm, like just eyes peeled looking at the teas and I'm, like so I'd look for like two seconds just to make sure I'm not gonna crash into something like <laughs> yeah. people out there. And then I turned around like next minute. Albatross, the seal was coming in. So we got gang bangs like that many albatrosses. Like, oh, they're fucked. Yo. I kept eating mine too when we were doing skipping them. Yeah. Poor little Tommy, my little daddy, he was just like, bruh, all I've done is looked at the bait board and needle all day. <laughs> yeah, just kept rigging them. Yeah. But well, we couldn't buy wax thread anywhere. Oh, really? Nah, yeah. so we pulled into like a BCF in Bendigo. So you could imagine <laughs> what they've got. Yeah. I'm like, you got wax thread? The dude's like, do you want to make a case or something? Yeah, yeah, it's something like, weird. To rig baits and he's like, oh, salt water. Yeah. <laughs> like, we're in the wrong place here. Yeah. yeah. But then we went to the tackle shop at Burmy because they open at 6 a.m. Like good pies. Yeah. Good and pies I'm, at Burmy. Good pies. <laughs> and I'm like, uh, wax thread, nah, it was sold out because they're getting pumped, yeah, obviously, yeah. with this hot yeah. bite. And then I'm like, okay, I'll get some Dacron. They're like, oh, normally we have spools of it made up. Here, I'll give you some, put it in your bag. I'm like, sweet. Get me a bag when I go out. There's a meter of Dacron. I think he just wanted, thought I want it for live bait. And I'm like, I was going to stitch shit up with that because there's no wax thread. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, we were pretty, she was pretty rough today with the setup, wasn't it, Squirrels? But we had the swim bait rods yeah. for cod fishing as our rods. So if you got if you hooked something on it, it'd just punish you. The rods are like eight foot long. You just get destroyed. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Either way, it wasn't going to be enjoyable at nah, any stage. You'd be just... You'd get him jumping a bit and go, how sick is this? Let's just say we caught him. Put your thumb on the spool, yeah, point yeah, the rod, give him a bit of this one. Yeah. Yeah. That off. was like the same as, yeah, like, yeah, so our fish that we got, we got it up and then, yeah, Tommy grabbed it and then ended up having to let go. And then I'm like, the second time, like, we've got wraps on it. I'm like, fuck, I grabbed the thing off. I want to go on. I don't want to see it again. Yeah. And then <laughs> go fishing again. Like, and then, yeah, when I said, like, you got wraps on it? He's like, yep. And then it's just gone. I'm like, thank fuck for that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 
that's how we fish back home in that when we practice fish because we want to it's numbers fishery yeah and when it obviously charters different because people yeah, want a photo it's heaps different, people like, really want yeah. a photo with their catch or, or and all that and experience it where we're like literally got them on got them off so yeah. we usually if we're like light tackle fishing we run, run like a bite leader that's less than the main leader so if it's like sail fish in the gulf yeah we run like a 30 or 40 pound bite leader yeah, that's right. only like a foot long or whatever and yeah. then run like 60 pound. Yeah. And literally we hook them and they come up jumping and then you just like as fast as you can yeah. and the decky will, will just go Hoo! dink like you fight them yeah. for 30 seconds sometimes. Got anyone got off? Yep. Yeah. And then that's you catch crazy. another one. Hey, yes. And people are like, oh, that's not cool. It's like, yeah, but when you've, like this guy's out. How's that guy out there today? Dead boat in this poor marlin. Didn't drive on it, <laughs> yeah. and they drifted with the current forever. It's like that thing comes up, and then you hold it by the bill. It's, it's dying. Dead, yeah. yeah, it's yeah. like give it, you know, trying to like just get them going. You know, you know that's how I feel too. Like back to that, you know, caper marlin. Like so many people do that sort of shit, and you're like, that marlin's fucked anyway. Like, yeah, it's yeah. not gonna live. Like, yeah, that's yeah. right. And that's the thing with all of them. You know, we had a. Squirrelly caught like a 500 pound black marlin with yeah. me and he fought it for about 15 minutes and it yeah. died, just died. Yeah. Oh, really? Just fucking yeah. dead. Like, was come up wasn't dead like as a hard, hard fight or anything. Was no. like just Blech. did a Blech. bit and then just was fucking. Was it deep or? No. Nah. No. Nah. No, nah, it was on a lure. Oh. Yeah. Okay. Just, I, just like heart attack type shit. Like, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> It must have been a real life beast. It was literally, yeah, yeah. Yeah. literally fought it for maybe not 15 minutes. Yeah. No. Nah. And just like. Die and we're like, oh well, we might as well keep it. Yeah, but you know, yeah. it looked had a it big fucking head, yeah, and then it. like tapered little uh, little yeah. body. Yeah. Oh, um, maybe it just wasn't a healthy fish or something. Just... Eh. Well, now maybe it's not. maybe Did you, um, just got it, the all time bill. It, it probably just felt the power. I've still got on the <laughs> other end. Still got the bill at home. Oh, yeah. out of curiosity, did you like um, looking at stomach or anything like that or? But I oh, remember. only just like I, I, I definitely even didn't fill it up with a fucking chainsaw. I can oh, tell you that. Oh, did. <laughs> yeah. I picked it up with my forklift and filled it with the chainsaw. Oh, yeah, no. that's right, yeah. Matt. There's still like the oil that come off it went all on this rumor thing I've got, and it's still like <laughs> can't get it off the walls. Yeah. yeah, I ate it though. It was good. Yeah. Well, probably because it wasn't cooked. Because you only caught it for like. But blue marlin die a bit. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, it's a bit of an untalked about thing, but if yeah. you. If you blew marlin out of Exmouth, and I imagine anywhere, if you caught 40 or 50 fish for the year, yep. you would have three or four just drop dead. Yeah, like, yeah. And I'm talking like short fights, 20 minute fights. Yeah. Yeah. Some of them try and pull down and then they end up with like that lactic acid in the guts or whatever. And yeah. They, yeah. They flop. Yeah. No, the only thing I was curious because you said at the table, I wasn't sure if it was something like maybe it hadn't been hooked before, deep hooked. And because you did, yeah, I don't know. No. Yeah. You see a little bit with the kings here, hey, you get some of the charlin fish and they're so run out, like really yeah. skinny. Yeah. Yeah, I have seen that with kings, eh? Yeah. 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 Just one of the vagaries. Yeah. yeah. Just didn't have the will to live. Yeah, that's it. <laughs> just Poor for, genetics. Yeah, yeah it's just just yeah. a millennial. I know I've hooked blue marlin in like super green crappy water, which is unusual for them. Yeah. And they usually don't fight that hard, but I've talked to people and they reckon that the um, bluer water is more oxygenated, so it yeah. could be just that that slows them down a bit. Yeah, true. That's probably a bit like um, for us with our bluefin, like I'd 100% say that yellowfin go t- like heaps harder than bluefin, but then you go down to Bico and everyone's like, they go hard. And, or, I and have heard that as they come up the coast. Yeah. Like a, like if you get them bit when they have barrels off yeah. Sydney, they reckon they just roll them out in 10 minutes yeah. type thing. Yeah, we've had a few. Oh, we had... In saying that though, um, we had a we actually had a couple of record fish um, on charter. It was a few years back now, and we had, we had a three way. Actually, we ended up we pinged the first fish, and then we fought the other two fish. One went um, four and a half hours, and then we marked a slug on the sand, and it got sharked after four and a half hours. And then the other one was five hours, but it was. I think it was 153 kilos. Jesus yeah. Christ! But it had like a, I don't know if it's been broken but it had like the longest time at liberty like because it was a tagged fish it was and it was originally tagged in tasmania and it was tiny and yeah it was um yeah it was it broke a bunch of records i ended up doing a, um, a few articles for blue water magazine and stuff that's super cool um, that's yeah wicked. yeah wow 
No, it was a pretty big fish. 150 kilos. Okay. And the tag things even yeah, cooler. Yeah, yeah. But it, my, oh, I just remember when I went upstairs and I my boss was about ready to cry because, yeah, four and a half hours and we just got sharks by one. And then, yeah. Uh, it was actually, we had, um, it was um, the Adreno guys from Sydney. They come they come down every year normally to do a spear fishing trip. Yeah. Um, and yeah, it was pretty cool. I remember the first year I did, we, they shot a bunch of bluefin and um, I actually ended up getting to catch a bluefin. It was pretty cool. I just remember it was like That's my cool. first season doing the tuna. And um, we had them up on the cube, and they have jumped in. And, like, and normally what we do when we do like the chip, like for the spear and stuff, you still you do your trial and like because obviously you're trying to mark fish, and as soon as you, you cook them. one up, you just it, it, you yeah, just as, the, as the deck, you like you just gotta be that onto it because as soon as you hook up, you just throw in cubes and just making sure that you've yeah. got everything. Then you just gotta keep that cube shell going to hold the fish. And yeah, I was pretty. I was on that. I was like around eighteen or nineteen, and yeah, and then got them up, and then. We, well, we hooked the one fish, had the cubes gone, the guys jumped in, they shot a few fish, and I was just throwing cubes. I just remember my boss came over and put out the rod and was feeding it out. And I'm like, what are you doing? And then the next it's hooked up, he's like, take this. And I'm like, really? And he's like, <laughs> <laughs> And then, yeah, so I ended up, yeah, I, I think, oh, it wasn't a ma- it was like 46 kilos, it wasn't massive. That's fish, cool but, fish. Yeah, I got to go, I got paid to go out and deck for the day, caught a 46 kilo bluefin and then the like the spiro dudes they were legends they all gave chipped in and gave me a tip so i'm like this is the fucking Fuck best yeah. day ever that's cool and then it was that like, funny though at the time i had a little toyota echo and i was like adamant i was taking it home to show mum and dad so i just threw this tune in the back of my echo i couldn't even <laughs> close the back door and but my, yeah my boss just shaking his head at me like yeah do you want me to fill it for you? I'm like, nah, I'm taking nah, it home. But then I ended town. up getting home and then no one was even home. So I had to carry this tune out of the back of my car and cut it up. I was like, this is retarded. <laughs> they're a pain to cut up, eh? Yeah, they're not, not too bad. I'm not good at them yet. Yeah. I think, <laughs> what about Marlon? What do you think of Marlon? That's all right. Yeah, Marlon's, a, I don't know. I can you butcher do them it. in segments. Better with a chainsaw. No, well, Marlon's no. like a normal fish. Well, when I cut up big Tuna. yellow fin, yeah. like anything over 50 kilos or whatever, yeah. Try and do the bit where you leave the the pin bone bit yeah. in, the, in the body, so it's all right. But they're just so big and they're like round. Where at least the marlin's flat a bit, but depends yeah. how big. So I always do them like when it, oh same with marlin. I just do it in segments though. Like I'd never try and do the whole thing. I just especially no, yeah. with tuna, you just break it up and yeah. Well, one thing is most of my filleting is done like in a proper yeah air true. filleting room with yeah, all yeah. the. Yeah. conveniences you could ever ask for so knives yeah. and sure whatnot. i don't even know what am i talking to you about feeling you like in gunnet filleting oh, i don't know about that but <laughs> bloody, um them big not anymore now part. he just goes down yeah. the filleting table to get free fish off yeah, that's oh, yeah. yeah. Like, oh, hey mate i've never seen one of them <laughs> yeah. Wait, what is oh, what, fish, what yeah. does that taste like <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that tastes good. Marlin, do the hair tough behind the ear. <laughs> yeah. right. Well, it's funny because we talked about how nice the guys at the filleting table and everyone has been at the boat ramps. Yeah. Like, where back home, normally it's like, hey, mate, where'd you catch that? <laughs> Fuck off. <laughs> yeah. The bass <laughs> fucking <laughs> asked me anything. 100%. These guys have been good to us. Yeah. I have, like, noted that. Like, I obviously, like, we're on the East Coast, so I haven't met heaps of people from WA, but everyone that I have met from WA, they're, you guys are like the most cagiest motherfuckers ever. <laughs> <laughs> Dead set. Like you ask, like you just ask, like, just nothing. Just like, like oh, okay, yeah, sorry. Yeah. <laughs> Fuck yeah, we've all been burnt too often. But it, yeah. It, we it, want our GST back. Yeah. <laughs> well, in, in saying Storm that though, capital. I feel like I'm definitely more gone that way just after, yeah. You, like, especially on chat, like I get so many people call me up all the time, oh, where are the fish are, where are this and what? There's no way I'd ever call you. Like, I'd ex- you guys would oh, ever yeah. call me up to tell me this. And I'm like, yeah, you just... It's that, kind of- that's exactly right. And I think um, you're you're young still. As you yeah. get older, you get you, you realise it yeah. more and you get bitter on it. Yeah. Yeah, but um, obviously not with the right people, like me yeah. and Squirrely. Yeah. Where for I? Yeah, we well, <laughs> yeah, 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 100%. Tried to help us honest. and we couldn't even still fucking do anything. Yeah, yeah. But, um, yeah that's the good thing. You can tell us anything. It's yeah. not going to help because we're yeah. fucking idiots. It can definitely be really hard with it, though. I, like, I'm, yeah, 100% yeah. this year. Oh, yeah, like you said, when you're young, you're a bit more naive to it. But, yeah, definitely learning. But It's empowering saying no, too. Like you yeah. said, it can be hard because you sort of get put in a corner. But then yeah. once you get to a stage in your life where people are like, Oh, can you just give us a whatever? I and mean, you're just like, no. Yeah. And then you're like, afterwards, you're like, fuck yeah, that yeah. felt good. It's and then you never say yes again. You, yeah, can you pass me the fork? No, you can't. <laughs> yeah, 
Yeah, just so like sometimes the people like hear you. I mean, like you feel like the biggest cunt just saying no, but then you end up just shooting on yourself on the foot. Like you, you tell them stuff and like you just go that far backwards with it. Like you have put so much time and effort into exactly. working something out. Um, it was like that time, like when we went bass fishing, that yep. like. Yeah, you put so much time and effort to working shit out and like up the fish at this stage in the river. And Where this, exactly that, did you? Oh, yeah. I'll, <laughs> I'll send you the coordinates. Yeah. Yeah. See, I even said to Squirly, yeah, yeah. I said, I promised her I would never go back there without her. And he goes, oh, yeah, fair enough. So yeah, yeah 100%. Like, so, but that's exactly right. Yeah. And like you said, if you the problem is if you feel bad for saying no or whatever, but they're the dickhead. Yeah. It shouldn't be. People shouldn't be going, hey, can I have your best fucking snapper spot? Yeah. Or whatever. It's like, oh, well, that's fuck what I- you. I don't know. I don't like for me though. Part of um like the reward with catching fish too is being able to work it out for yourself. Like being spoon fed something like you're just ticking boxes. Really, it's not really. I don't know. Like it's. But that that is the other problem with giving away spots. Yeah. Is you give it away to one person. No. Yeah. But that one person gives it away to one. Gives it yeah, away yeah. to another person to another person who gives yeah. it away. Especially because it's not. They didn't put in the work to find yeah, it. Yeah. That spot means way less to them. Yeah. yeah. And then it's fucking 30 people that have yeah. And have then the it's just ruined and then it's spot. like, yep, yeah. Sweet. And then no one's catching fish yeah. at that yeah. spot anymore. Yeah. A spot usually is only as good as how many people know about it. Yeah. yeah That's why yeah, them artificial reefs and that don't do a lot because they get fished all the time, you know. It's yeah. like Exmouth, we've got... A bunch of jetties and they're good for fishing off. Yep. But then we've got the Navy Pier, which is a jetty and it's a sanctuary. You can't fish off it. You swim under it. It's full of fish. Yeah. <laughs> you know? yeah. But I feel like, yeah, a lot of it too is also just dependent on how much effort you do after you go to um, like fishing. Like, it was, you know, like with that bass stuff, for instance, like a lot of that, you, you have to drive a fair way. And when I do like the proper paddles, you're doing like a minimum of like a 10, 15K paddle. And not many people these days want to go do that. Like, I've had a bunch of mates hit me up for take us bass fishing and like you get out there and you barely even walk a k and you get to like prime time like just on dark and like can we go home I'm like and it's like obviously they're like with eye twitch I'm like, Are you <laughs> fucking real? I'm like, like no we've just we're, we're going bass fishing like we're yeah. gonna be i remember like see i'll put in the boat in at the ramp oh yeah missus wants to be home by three it's like, oh. no it sucks to be you <laughs> and your missus then doesn't yeah. it? no i'm single i'm like fuck that shit i'm like if i want to go fishing i'm going fish if i want to go yeah. hunting for a week i just yeah no that's what I'm but doing. yeah that's you're right there some people just want to just they think they want to do something but they don't you know? yeah 100 yeah yep. Yeah, cool. So, what well, what's the future hold? Just stay skippering, stay. Yeah, I don't know. At is this... there anything that you want to chase that you haven't ever fishing, diving? No, I don't know. At, at the moment, like I'm still, I'm pretty content um, with doing what I'm doing. Like, I'm pretty lucky. Like my boss is an absolute legend. He's probably my best mate too. So that it's helps. pretty cool being able to like, yeah, do a job that. Like, yeah, for the most, like, obviously, it's like anything. You have your shit days, and you're like, fuck this, and over <laughs> yeah, it. But, yeah. but then you have, like, all these really good days, and, yeah, like, get to work with people that I enjoy working with, and, yeah, my boss looks after me really well. And, and I feel like, as well, like, yeah, obviously, like, pretty well just, like, settled in at the moment, and it's cool because I feel like where we are here, too, like, like in the room, of, there's so many options, and it's not, too, like, you know, Come winter time, if you want to go inland, it's only like you know two hour drive, and you can go trout fishing, you can go fish you can be in and go do that. Not that I'm a, I'm, I hate to say it, I'm slowly getting converted to trout fishing because I've always like slagged people like hard for trout fishing. I'm like, why the fuck are you wouldn't want to fish for yeah. a spotted carp? Yeah. But like I am like progressively like uh. enjoying it more and more. Like, to be, I always get really bad anger management issues when I go trout fishing because I just seem to have issues catching them. But uh, yeah, like. You go do that, and then it's not too far to go hunting and stuff. Like, there's heaps of prime hunting country, not like a couple of hour drives away. And then, yeah, same story if you want to go north up to Coffs and chase like more of your warmer stuff. Or, yeah, yeah like, and there's so and many stuff. like heaps of, and yeah, we've got bass here and all that sort of thing. There's so many like, I feel like options fairly close by, like, we're in a pretty good spot. So, I don't know, I'm pretty content just doing what I'm doing at the moment, but yeah, I don't know. I couldn't agree more. I reckon yeah. this section of the coast had never really yeah. crossed my mind before i traveled around but yeah. i think it's i think it's the better version nearly of queensland and queensland sold as the thing that yeah. has everything but this is you know and you got cod and everything yeah you 
Yeah, yeah. and especially uh, with the child work too, like summertime um, is hectic. Like you pretty much – like, well, even just now, it's been really weird. We've had a, like a massive run of work. I've done like – I did almost like three weeks straight just every day working – but at the same time, like, you work in school holidays and, like, I could not think of anything worse than having holidays, like, having time off during holidays. Like, there's so many people. Like, yeah. to me, like, it's the best <laughs> yeah. thing being able to be on the water during holidays because I just avoid the crowds. And then, like, when we get our time off, it's, like, during the middle of the week, so you go out fishing, you see hardly anyone. And during our, like, our quiet time, it, like, sort of more towards winter, and, like, after the tuna season. So that's pretty much when we have our holidays. And then you go away and you see, like, no one as many people and, um, my boss, he used to be a barrow guide and stuff, and like, he's a phenomenal fisherman. And so, yeah, like we come winter time, we just head up north, go barrow fishing, go, yeah, do yeah, a few nice. weeks away, and then, yeah, come back. And so, I don't know, I like it. It's pretty good. Like, I think my sort of lifestyle, I really enjoy doing it. So, yeah, well, yeah. if he was a barrow guide, and I think he's got Shane Compain's old pathfinder. He does, yeah, he? Oh, yeah. When yeah. are you going on the barrow trip if you need us? I'll, I'll come. <laughs> This is where you got to learn to say no. Yeah. No, <laughs> no. <laughs> Fuck no. You. no, you guys will get on really well. So, well, no, he's a phenomenal. My my boat's retired to Barra and Murray Cod only. <laughs> yeah, that's all it does now. That's it. Yeah. It's not allowed to do anything else. He um oh, I don't know if you know oh my boss is Ben Bolden. He um he's the guide in WA as well. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Doing what? I every like sailfish or everything. He like what up in Exmouth? I don't even. He did all like. Pretty much. So he he actually started out um like pretty much same like similar age to when I was so like eighteen. He yeah. started working like our boats um nitro on PlayStation. He worked on the original PlayStation and did that and then um yeah had his tickets. Was, well, he's also welding that and then went travelling around Australia a couple yeah. of times with his missile and then pretty much just yeah either chartered or welded along the way. So yeah, okay, he might have done it in Broom South. Yeah, fishing. yeah, he would have done Broom. He's done yeah a bunch of areas. Because um, I think I would have known of him if he'd done it in Exmouth. Yeah, I remember he got bagged out one day because he live baited and I was like, fucking South Coast for dude. <laughs> oh, yeah, in Broome. Yeah. Yeah, because yeah. they don't like live baiting. Yeah. Because um, I think Ross Newton, who wrote the book on uh, bill fishing in Broome, literally, yeah. um, early days was dominating a lot of comps too. Yeah. And they try, as they do with a lot of things, they try to change the rules to make it not so. So now their comps only uh, dead yeah. bait. Yeah. And lure fishery, which is cool. Yeah. Our, our boat, um, the PlayStation, which I actually work on, it, it actually came from WA. Yeah, it was a broom yeah. boat, wasn't it? Yeah. Yeah, I remember yeah. seeing it there. No, it's a weapon of a boat. It's, yeah, unreal to fish out of. Yeah. Yeah. No, he brought that over and did it up, so. No, cool boat. Yeah, it's cool. Yeah, cool. Any more questions, Leibold? Nah. No. No. Nah. Happy with that? I think so. Wicked. Thanks for chumming up. Cheers. Catch ya. Catch ya. Oh my god. What the fuck is happening right now? Dolphin in the killer whale's mouth. Holy shit. Oh, this is the best day of my life. God. <laughs> what? I'd like going down the farm and chasing bluegill in the dummy car.